Fair warning, do not move to the Dominican Republic until you watch this video. Cause we were freaking wrong. I'm gonna share five mistakes that you don't wanna make when you make the move here. Trust me, these are things you need to be aware of before you get down here. Let's dive in. What's up everybody, my name's Jamie Gruber. I moved to the Dominican Republic with my family in 2022 after leaving a $400,000 corporate executive career. And I like to share really all of it, but more specifically, what it's like making that move abroad. Today, there are five mistakes that people make, me included, that I wanna warn you off of before you make the move here. So don't come down here until you know what these five things are. It's going to build a little bit. First couple are going to be kind of obvious, maybe a little bit simple, but trust me, by the end, there's a couple of tips in there that you need to know to avoid making the mistake. The first one's pretty simple. Don't be flashy. I actually think Punta Cana area might be a little bit of the exception here. There's a lot of wealth, a lot of abundance. It's sort of built to be modern and Western, if you will. And that's the same for other areas of the country. Don't get me wrong. But generally speaking, you know, wearing a bunch of flash and all this stuff, just you don't want to draw attention to yourself, especially if you're going to go into cities like Equal. Way, Santiago, Santo Domingo, so on and so forth. The less flash, the better. It doesn't mean you have to look homeless, but you get the point. Look, I wear this almost every day. You probably, if you watch my content, have seen me with this on, especially on Instagram. And here's why, to be honest with you. Imagine a world where you have somebody that washes your clothes and puts them away every day. I go to the gym in this shirt. I come home. Most days, I take a shower right away. Not today. I throw it on the floor, I throw it in the hamper, and it gets washed and put right back on top in my drawer. So when I open the drawer, I pull it out. I'm not thinking about what I'm wearing. I just throw it on. So this is kind of my look. Black t-shirt. I don't wear big chains or rings or anything like that. And we drive an older vehicle, about 12 years old as the time of this recording. Not even intentionally because of not being flashy. I just don't value cars. So to me, as long as it gets me A to B, I'm good. My wife feels a little differently, but thankfully she allows me to be cheap on cars. I do see Teslas, Porsches, Mercedes, really nice vehicles, people dressed really well in Punta Cana. But when you get out to other parts of the island, I think to be smart, you just don't look too flashy. The second one, don't get a small vehicle. We have a station wagon, so it's not necessarily small, but it's low to the ground. And there's two issues with that. The first, anyone that's ever come up on a speed bump in the Dominican Republic knows that they often can be about the size of Pico Duarte. So no matter how much I angle myself over the bump or try to go slow, I bottom out all the damn time. The second thing is there's often when there's heavy rain, a lack of drainage or very slow drainage. So you're going through deep water on roads here in Punta Cana, but especially if you're going to be in the capital in Santo Domingo. In my couple of years here, to be honest with you, Punta Cana doesn't get as much rain, but the middle of the country tends to. Might be something to do with the mountain range is kind of out that way. I don't know. We get rain here and there is some heavy rain water. Recently, as I record this, actually, there was really heavy rain that started to flood areas in Bavado. And when you're driving through with a lower vehicle, water can get sucked up in and stall the engine. This happened to my wife. Of course, she barreled through it as if she's a steamboat and didn't go nice and slow through the water. I coached her up on it. Don't worry. So the engine seized and she had to get it kind of dried out to start it again. But having an SUV, something a little larger, if you can afford to, would be smart. That's our next car. So find a vehicle that's not so low to the ground. Okay. Please. All right, let's get into some deeper stuff. Number three is something you've heard me say before, but I'm just going to rubber stamp it right here for you. And that is do not believe your friends when it comes to expenses. There's two kinds of friends I hear people listening to. It's their friends in the States who are citing what they believe expenses to be. And they're unfortunately circa 2008 with that crap. And then there are friends here who are going to give you the best case scenario of what monthly expenses are. And they're often low. On another video, I shared this. I was DMing with a woman who shared with me because I always we say, oh, it's this much to live with a family of four. She's like, look, family of three, Puerto Plata, $1,200 a month. I'm like, that's amazing. And then just asked her like, school too? And she goes, oh no, I forgot. We paid in full for school. And there was a couple of other things. Yeah, I'm going to say 1500 to my friends now. One question, 300 bucks more a month, just like that. And this is my new kind of talking point on this that I want to make sure I share with all of you because there's going to be people in the comments and I always go after them. I'm a go after people in the comments kind of guy I've noticed, by the way. So fair warning. People will say something like, dude, that's way too high. You paid too much that you can do it for less, this, that, and the other. Here's my response to that. If you believe my content and I say, save this much to move, or this is how much it is to live month and you actually get close to that and then I'm wrong and the cost is less happy to be wrong. I want you to laugh in my face at how wrong I was. <laughs> and 
and also take me out to dinner with the amount of money that you're saving. But flip it around. Your friends tell you it's 18 cents a month to live here and you save that and you realize it's actually much more than that just based on day-to-day -day living expenses. That's a wrong you don't wanna be. So I'd rather you go with what I say and be wrong than you go with what they say and be wrong. How do I know? Cause we were freaking wrong. People think that I just kinda like, oh, hold on, there's all this money like bogging me down, man. Let me just throw it out there and spend it. Nah, I sold a car to move here. We saved a bunch of money and then even still it was like, how much is that school? Like we got quoted on the cheap school and we went there and we're like, this isn't the school for our kids. Well, in order to go to the next school, we're going to have to go with a higher price point. Let me extend the olive branch. I always extend and people always miss this part in my content. Yes, you can live for less. There are great minimalist accounts that you can follow. Tommy Bryson is amazing. Follow his YouTube channel. We'll put it up here. If you want somebody who speaks more on like abundance and not living as frugally, my guy abroad with Jay, follow his YouTube channel. And there are other minimalist channels out there. If you're looking to be minimal, I look at it as I don't want to look at the right side of the menu. I don't want to think about my expenses too much. And if that's you, trust me on the price of things. Don't trust your friends and family here. They're lying to you. Not on purpose, but you get the point. All right, the fourth and fifth one are really, really interesting. Which one do I do first? We'll do this one. Do not pay upfront for months of rent. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm gonna move down there. I'm gonna negotiate with the landlord to pay six months or a year all up front for rent at a discount. Great in theory, and maybe it'll work, but here's the problem. Cash is king down here. Cash rules everything around us. Cream, get the money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Somebody has to know that reference. Drop it in the comments if you do. <laughs> but seriously, cash is king. If you hold the cash, you're the king. If you give the cash away, they're the king. So what does that mean? Hey, landlord that I paid for an entire year, something's going on with our home that we need fixed. The landlord may or may not aggressively and timely respond to that request. If they already have all of your money, but if you hold the rent still, you've got leverage to say, hey, this place isn't livable in the condition that it's in or with this issue, this doesn't get paid until it's taken care of. Now there's a whole people who'll be like, oh, landlord will kick you out, man. Whatever, you get the point, hold the cash. I'll give you an example. We have a neighbor who moved into a home. She did not thankfully pay it all up front. And after two months in the home, said to the landlord, none of the stuff you promised to be ready for us is ready. And now you wanted to come in after we moved in and we have to live in a construction zone. I'm out, I'm not paying, we're moving. And that's what happened. The landlord let them go and they're trying to find another tenant. Hold your cash. Don't try to get a little money off by paying up front for six months, nine months, or a year. More people than maybe some people think ask that question. And again, I get it, not the right move. There's less protections here, the real story, than there might be in the United States, but I wouldn't even do that in the United States for the exact same reasons. Now we did pay all in full for school. I have no idea what would happen if we decided we're moving or we're leaving. We even talked about moving to Cabarete at one point for like a six month adventure. If we went to the school and said, hey, we're not gonna use that second six months, pay us back. Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. I have no idea. We love our school, we're not going anywhere. But even that is something to consider. Do you pay up front for anything? Contracts, agreements, all of that are great. Just something to be mindful of when you're putting all your cash up. To me in the end though, school is one thing Thing, the home you're living in, that's another. I would not give up your leverage in the home you live in if you're renting. All right, the last one. This is less a don't, and I'm gonna call it more of like a cuidado. That's be careful if you don't quite speak the kind of Spanish that I do, which that word plus two, three others, that's all I got. So be careful with this one. Be careful doing business with family. My wife's from here. We have an amazing, amazing family here. Cousins, aunts, uncles, the whole nine. We obviously trust them. We have one family member that's amazing. He comes over and watches our dogs whenever we go someplace and don't bring them with us. He also is a driver, an Uber driver that I send to people off the, to pick up at the resort and come meet me or whatever. He's incredible, very reliable. He He's awesome. But then when you're doing things like finding an attorney for your cedula, or everyone here is in real estate, so using a real estate agent or broker, often you can find those people that are within your family. How do I put it delicately? A lot of families learn, not just us, that sometimes the family member treats that relationship, which is supposed to be a business transaction, perhaps a bit less formally because you have a family relationship with them. In other words, for serious business transactions, consider a layer of a buffer between you and your 
your family. Look, this is the same in the United States, in my opinion. I really, really have never enjoyed the idea of doing business with family. We've had a couple of bad experiences with certain family members in the States who take advantage that we're related, but from their perspective, they think that we're being too cold. This had to do with renting property to a family member. I'm not gonna get into that, but the point is it didn't go great, and there's really not a relationship today as a result of that. In the Dominican Republic, family is everything. And it's one of the things I truly, truly love about this country. My in-laws, like I say my uncle, I try to be like my wife's uncle on this video, but he's my tío. My cousins are my primos and primas. That's just, I feel that way. Family is so important here and I love that. So having that American expectation, that Canadian sort of way of being where you expect a certain level of service for your money, even if they're family, with family members who come from a culture and have never left this culture of being maybe a bit more informal with family members, not such a big deal. Don't worry about it. Can really create a rift. They might know it. They might not feel it but you do. Again, I want to be clear. There's nothing that our family members did wrong or improperly, but man, some of the things that we had to get done when we relied on family members, it created some tension for us. And we just know and believe from what we've seen, if we had done this as a transaction with somebody that's not a family member, it would have gotten done because the only transaction there is our money for your time with nothing more complicated than that. The only flip side to that is that if you need service recovery, a family member might be more willing than maybe somebody that you transact with that's outside of your family. And every family is different, don't get me wrong, but it's just something that I've seen as a trend. When we describe even small frustrations with some of the stuff that relied on family to do for us, we've had so many people say, oh God, yeah, yeah, I love my family, but oh, it's just something maybe you don't wanna put in between you and them. Get family recommendations for other people for sure, using family if you can avoid it i would i'd be curious what some of you think on that does that make sense i think some of you are going to be like i get it i completely get that i've had that experience and others would say oh, you're in the wrong family man which whatever you have your judgment but the point is everyone's going to have a different opinion on this i wonder what all of you think drop it down in the comments does that make sense i think with all of it there's just it has to be an acknowledgement if you're coming here from a developed world like the united states or canada or europe there's more structure, there's more expectation for what the transaction will be than maybe there is here. Now I talked about not believing family and friends about the cost to move here. If you wanna know what I say the cost to move here is, click this video right here and it'll give you a full overview of what it cost me to get down here. And as always, I appreciate you subscribing, liking and commenting, it helps the channel grow and I'll see you on the next one.